Good evening and welcome to St Thomas's for our time of prayer on the 29th of May. And as we are coming together, just giving time for people to join the live feed. Um, just to introduce myself, I'm Reverend Gemma Stock and I'm the priest in charge here at St Thomas's. Uh, if you haven't joined us before, a really warm welcome to you. It's so good to have you with us. Uh, generally, what we tend to do is we have a time of quiet at the beginning in reflection, and then we have a psalm and a Bible verse and a thought for the day, and then we begin to pray for those around us, for the world, and for ourselves. And I do encourage you, if you can join in in the comments, it's really lovely when you're able to do that because then we can pray for each other, we can support one another. Uh, so please do do that if you feel able to. If you can't and you'd rather keep things up and private, then that's absolutely fine. Please do join us either way. The words that you need if you'd like to join in will come up behind me. Um, but again, you can just sit quietly where you are and say your own prayers to God. So as we begin our time of prayer, some words from the Bible for us to remember who God is. The eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. He made heaven and earth. We come now to reflect before God, remember our day, perhaps the good things that we would like to give thanks for, perhaps some more tricky things that we've struggled with today and we'd like his help with. Maybe things that we regret and we desire forgiveness for or someone that's hurt us and we want help in forgiving them. Let's just have a moment to reflect on our day in his presence. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. Amen. And so we come to our psalm. Um, it's wonderful when you are happy to read it out where you are. I realise not everybody feels able to do that, but if you can, that would be lovely. Um, uh, if you want to just listen, and that's absolutely fine too. Um, if you're wanting to look it up, the psalm we're going to be using is Psalm 130. So if you have your Bible handy or your phone, you can use Bible Gateway um, or even just a, a Bible app if you have one. So Psalm 130. Out of the depths, I cry to you, God, Lord God, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, so that we can, with reverence, serve you. I wait for the Lord, my whole being waits, and in, my, in his word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord, more than watchmen wait for the morning, more than watchmen wait for the morning. Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We come to our reading. We've been following the thoughts and reflections from Thy Kingdom Come. And if you would like to do that, you can sign up still. Uh, if you go to the Thy Kingdom Come website, 
And there is a prayer journal that you can download and print as well. If you would find it easier for me to email the journal to you, because I realise trawling through websites isn't always the easiest, my email is revgstock at gmail.com and I can send you the information. So the reading is from Luke 15, verses 20 to 24. And it's the prodigal son. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. The reflection I'm going to use is from the prayer journal, so it's not mine, but I felt that it was actually a really important thought for us for this evening. So I'm going to share it with you now just as it's written and then maybe share some thoughts for us afterwards. How joyful God is when he welcomes us back. We can have such skewed ideas of God, as if he is an angry dictator or a fault-finding head teacher. But actually God is love and his attitude towards us is compassion and grace, even when we are far from him. He is willing to run and meet us. He is willing to run and meet us the way this father did. Look how it says, but while he was still far off, the father didn't wait for the son to come all the way to him, but he went and made up the distance. God does that. God doesn't just wait. He comes out to us in his love and he stretches his arms in welcome. God is stretching his arm out right now, moving down the road, waiting for your friends to come home. It may well be the action that they give in this uh, journal that I've just shared rings true with you. I know it does with me. Think of how you have been hurt by someone or disagreed with them. How could you reach out and meet them where they are? just as Jesus has done for us. I don't know about you, but when you hear that um, wonderful reflection that's in that prayer journal from Thy Kingdom Come, there's, there's a peace. There is perhaps an amazement that God would do that for us. But then when I heard that action, I suddenly felt really challenged. How could I make that same move towards someone else where God makes up the distance with us and doesn't wait for us to come the whole way how might I display that same forgiveness that I've received from God today and that's not an easy thought for us to dwell on there may well be some real pain and hurt for you as you think about this may even be an abusive situation that you found yourself in. And I want to reassure you this evening that God is not saying that forgiveness means that you allow people back into the same sphere of influence they once held, or that it's okay for people to treat you in an abusive way. Forgiveness is about allowing healing for ourselves and saying that actually I am not the one who will be judging them. God, that's your job. And actually 
we come to a point where we say, you don't owe me anything. Because actually it's not our job to make anyone make up anything that they owe. God is the one who knows us. God is the one who knows people's hearts. And it does say that when Jesus returns, that he will judge. He will judge between the nations and he'll do it fairly. So we can trust that judgment to him. And when we forgive, it may well be incredibly painful. It may well be a journey. That, but God will help us with that every step of the way. And as much as it is about doing the right thing, because it is what God calls us to do, because he's done it for us, there is also, by his grace, freedom in it for us. I don't know if you've ever heard this saying, but um, I've heard it put like this, that when we don't forgive someone, it's like drinking poison and expecting someone else to feel the pain of it and to die. Forgiveness is as much about making sure that bitterness doesn't take root in our lives, that things that would cause us pain and difficulty don't take root as well. And it is an act of love, love for God. We, we may struggle to love our enemies, that's another thing that God tells us to do that isn't easy. We may struggle to love our enemies, but our first uh, port of call is to love God. And this is an act of love for him, where he has loved us, where we didn't deserve it either. None of us deserve it. It's uh, interesting that Psalm says that we, if we were to look at everyone's sins, we'd all be in trouble. But we receive God's love and we love him back by extending that forgiveness again. And we find our wholeness and our healing. And it is the right thing to do. Sometimes the things that are right are not always easy. But I leave you with that today. It is a challenge. If you do find yourself wanting to talk more with somebody about it, then please do contact us because we are wanting to explore faith uh, alongside you, with you, uh, as a church. But also don't take it to meaning that that means it's okay um, when people hurt you. Forgiveness isn't saying what they did is okay. Forgiveness is saying I put my trust in God to be the judge because he has redeemed me. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for the challenge of your word this evening. That is a, a wonderful encouragement to us to come home to receive your forgiveness, but also an encouragement for us to uh, forgive others, to show the same love and kindness to others that we have received. And Lord, as we grapple with that, as we grapple with the outworkings of that in our lives, we ask that you'd help us by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Amen. And as we pray, again, encourage you, please do pray in the comments if you're able to. And those who are seeing those comments, let's pray for one another this evening. as we begin some words from 1 Thessalonians 5, 9 and 10. God has not destined us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Let's pray. Merciful God, we entrust to your unfailing and tender care this night those who are ill or in pain, especially anyone who's grieving loss at this time. 
And Lord God, we also lift to you those who might be struggling with unforgiveness at this time, those who have experienced or are experiencing abuse, uh, those who are, for whatever reason, feeling great hurt through uh, someone else's actions, whether they know they've done it or not, whether they're repentant about it or not. And Lord, we entrust into your everlasting arms those particularly who are on our hearts and minds. And I just invite you to name before God those who you know at this time who might need his healing touch and his comforting presence. For all those we have named before you, Lord Jesus, we ask for your comfort, your healing, your restoration to health and strength. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Merciful God, we lift to you those who work in the NHS, those who work in caring professions, those who are key workers, perhaps some who are beginning to return to go out to work or continuing to work from home. And we particularly pray for parents, for grandparents, for foster homes, for children's homes, for carers and for children at this time. Lord, it's a pressurised time for relationships, for children and those who care for them, for fathers and mothers and those who they are caring for. Lord God, help them as they seek to balance their rest, their time with their children and one another, their worries about families or friends, we pray for their well-being and self-care at this time. And perhaps there are some that you would like to name before God, particularly in terms of their work, perhaps finding their jobs stressful at this time or difficult, or perhaps those who are caring for children and maybe are struggling with that, or just want to lift them uh, to be blessed by God, particularly at this time. Let's offer our own prayers for them to God now. For all those we have named before you, Lord, we ask that they would know the love of you as their Heavenly Father, your care for them, and Lord, may that refresh them as they seek to care for children, for grandchildren, for foster children at this time. And for the children themselves, uh, may they know your Father's love for them. Particularly, Lord, if they're struggling with their current situation. For 
all those we have lifted to you, we ask your blessing and a tangible knowledge of your love. We come to pray for the world. You may have countries on your heart where perhaps people you know or family members live abroad and you want to pray for them where they are and their countries where they're living. It may well be the situations on the news that you've seen that are maybe playing on your mind a bit, that have been sad to hear about. Or perhaps things that you've seen on the news and then it's disappeared for a while. And you wonder what's happening there. And you still want to lift them to God. Let's just spend some time praying our own prayers for the nations of the world, including the UK. We particularly pray for countries that are experiencing conflict at this time. And we especially think of the children and the families caught up in these conflicts, those that are vulnerable often suffer the most. Lord God, would you raise up more peacemakers, resource those who are seeking peace already. And we pray also for the humanitarian agencies who are on the ground trying to make sure that people receive health care, people receive food and shelter. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the silent hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may rest upon your eternal changelessness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And finally, we bring ourselves, our families, our neighbours, our neighbourhoods, our friends, our very homes before God. And I invite you in this time, if there's people particularly on your mind, um, perhaps, uh, or even a place uh, around you locally, uh, just picture it in your mind and hold it before God, asking for his blessing and uh, praying your own prayers for it. So let's do that together now. Visit this place, our homes, our communities. O oh Lord, we pray, and drive far from them the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us in peace, and may your blessing be always upon us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we gather our prayers together with the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As we draw our time to a close, uh, the song that we'll be worshipping to is Heart of God by Hillsong Young and Free. So if you go, um, YouTube that, you can find it if, by searching that in the search bar. But I will post the link on the YouTube page and the Facebook page as well, just for you to be able to click on. 
And in that time, please do continue to pray for each other and perhaps interact and support one another. Uh, maybe even share thanks and praise uh, for what God's done. We do thank you for joining us at St Thomas's as we've prayed this evening. We'd love you to join us again. We continue to pray each evening at 7pm. And if you've responded to God for the first time recently, if you would like to explore faith further, if you have questions, or even if you just would like some support at this time, whether it be practical or just somebody to talk to, please do private message us or use the contact details on the Facebook page. We would love to hear from you. But as we close our prayer time together, please do look after yourselves and look after each other. Let's share in God's blessing as we finish. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly upon us and give us peace. Amen. God bless you and good night. <laughs>